No, I'm profoundly <coughs> disturbed. Um, I think if you look at the New York Times this morning, uh, the headline was America makes a, a perilous choice. I think that in 2016, we didn't know what we would get from um, a Trump administration. The ladies on The View woke up to some surprising news this morning. Donald Trump was elected president of the United States. In this clip, you'll hear Sonny Hostin sharing her raw reaction, and then Joy Behar jumps in, questioning some of the exit poll numbers. They're all a bit thrown off and trying to make sense of it. But we know now, and um, we know now that he will have almost unfettered power. And so I worry, not about myself, actually. I don't worry about my station in life. I worry about the working class. I worry about my mother, a retired teacher. I worry about our elderly and their Social Security and their it's Medicare. So I worry about my children's future, especially my daughter, who now has less rights than I have. And I remember my father telling me many, many years ago that I was the first person in, in his family to enjoy full civil rights. And now I have less civil rights than I had when he told me that. So again, I'm profoundly disturbed that the 14th Amendment of the Constitution did not prevent someone who participated in an insurrection from becoming president of the United States. Mm -hmm. I think that going forward, the convicted felon box on employment applications better be taken off, because if you can be the president of the United States, then you should, then you should yeah. not be prevented from employment in this country, because I remember applying for my jobs in, as a, a federal prosecutor, and there was a box for convicted felons. Well, and so that box better, better be taken off. And I, I think our health care system is now at risk. I think... Um, no fluoride for anyone. Yeah, economists have made clear <laughs> that um, he's going to increase the debt by $7.75 trillion. I'm worried about mass deportation and internment camps, and I'm also worried about Elon Musk warning Americans to prepare for temporary hardship. Um, I'm surprised at the result, but I'm not surprised. As a woman of color, I was so hopeful that a mixed-race woman married to a Jewish guy could be elected president of this country. Uh -huh. And um, I think that it had nothing to do with policy. I think this was a referendum of um, cultural resentment. If you enjoy this type of content, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps me out a ton. Uh -huh. According to our research department here at ABC News, the state of democracy was the top issue to voters overall. So that says that they voted for a guy who wanted to overthrow the election, who also said he would be a dictator on day one, and they, they also said that democracy was number one. So I'm concluding that maybe they don't believe him. But I think no, that means, I think it means different, it different things. things. Right? I think democracy means different, different things, things. It means well, to different, different people. Well, when we were trying to overthrow a legitimate election and you say you're going to be a dictator, I don't know how you interpret that any other way, democracy. frankly. Yeah. So I can only conclude that they don't believe he's going to do that. And I, I hope they're right. Let me break it down for you. Many people don't buy into what's being said about Donald Trump by the mainstream media. They feel that there's been a lot of twisting of his words to paint him in a certain light, often as a fascist or authoritarian figure, and they see through it. When it comes to claims about him being a felon, some believe that legal tactics were used strategically just to label him that way. This election, people cared about preserving democracy, and to many, that meant standing up against what they see as media and political spin. Trump's support from black and Latino voters showed that his appeal wasn't based on divisive issues like racism or misogyny, but rather on pushing back against what some see as an out-of-touch far-left agenda. For those voters, it wasn't about personalities or Hollywood endorsements. It was about feeling misrepresented by a media and political elite that didn't speak for them. So, what do you think? Do you see the media's portrayal of Trump the same way, or do you think there's more to the story? Drop your thoughts in the comments, and if you found this breakdown interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe for more insights. It really helps out a ton.